Hello. Always good to be with you. There's a, a, a bit of a disturbance there in the background because they're undergoing some construction outside here. Perhaps I could speak a little louder and maybe that'll be a big help. Already we're at the third week of Lent. I'm always astounded at times how uh, time marches on. I guess I'm so busy at the moment. <laughs> now, you're, there is a possibility that we're, we're in the B cycle right now in the Lenten readings, in the uh, Sunday readings, including Lent. But there is the option uh, during Lent, always, um, of using the A readings and in some parishes, and especially in the circumstances of um, having the RCIA people there, they may use the A readings, which are the readings of the um, Samaritan woman, which are magnificent. But I'd like to do the Bs, which are the regular readings for this Sunday of Lent. Um, first of all, Gen uh, Exodus, rather. In those days God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God. And then he goes on. But the pronouncement there is a way of saying, I am God. I have the authority and the responsibility, obligation, to lead you. You are my people. And... In the past, when you haven't listened to my ways, you've gone astray. That's what you that's why you need me to make it very clear to you what to do and what not to do. Many ways like children, like a father leading his children, making it very clear. For one thing, in the past, they had worshipped false gods, left on their own, without the direction of the Lord, they had gone astray. Instead of worshipping the one true God, they, they worshipped this nonsense, these false gods, who were just images that were just empty things. And in their own minds, they had power, but they had no power. They were, they were counterfeits. I, the Lord, am your God. In effect, the one true God. God showing his way, not humans. Otherwise, we would get lost. In the third reading, the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 13 to 25, it's the, what we call the cleansing of the temple scene. And he goes through and knocks over the tables. Now, they would have the money changers there selling all the different things, uh, the, the animals that were needed for the sacrifice. But after a while, the emphasis was put on the marketing aspect rather than the worshiping that needed to be done. So once again, he was leading, showing his authority. Then, of course, he makes it clear, if you have the ears to hear, that he has to die. It is a temple that will be destroyed and in three days raised. He had here and there talked about it, but it was very difficult to understand because he was only willing to tell people to the degree they had the willingness to listen. Then this wonderful last paragraph, which might seem very obscure. Many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. The signs meaning the miracles. They were believing in him basically because they saw the miracles. They were astounded 
at the uh, supernatural kinds of things he was doing. But what was really important was to believe in the Jesus who was who is the Savior, saving us from our sins and leading us to the riches of holiness so that we share in the very nature of God himself. So that becoming to some extent like God, giving us his grace, his capacity to help us to be holy as God is holy, then we have the capacity to truly be people on our way to heaven, to eternal life. Then he goes on, but Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all, did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. They weren't following him for what was really good, for the holiness, but for the bread he produced, but for the miraculous signs. They weren't getting beyond what was on the surface, and finding that he had something far greater to give them. In that second reading from uh, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 22 to 25, Jews demand signs, miracles. Greeks look for wisdom. What Jesus was giving us was holiness, was God's life, eternal life. The miracles were to help them believe. They were sort of an introduction, but the real message was beyond it. For the foolishness of God is wiser than, than human wisdom, and the weakness of God stronger than human strength. As I understand him to be saying here is, the foolishness of submitting to the suffering and death of the cross, the weakness of submitting to the torture and the death on the cross is greater than human strength. Because in the end it leads to eternal life, to the resurrection. All that human strength, in the end, just leads to corruption and death. May the God bless us, may the dear Lord bless us, the willingness to follow him, to gain that gift that is forever, the gift that God constantly wants to give us, a share in his very self, his holiness. May God would be, continue to be with you during this Lenten time.